Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good Saturday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. And, uh, well, you know, it's a good day to uh, share your love with everyone in Alaska. We love to talk to you in Alaska on this Valentine's Day. It's the 14th of February. And as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with the weather that you love or don't love at weather.gov slash Alaska. ARH.NOAA.gov will get you there as well. The weather info line at 800-472-0391 is always open for you. Write those numbers down when you use them next time. You find us on Facebook. If you've done that today, you probably would have seen a, a picture of Feta Morgana and links to even more wonderful examples of Feta Morgana. If you're not familiar with what that is, check us out on Facebook. Take a look at some of those pictures and see if you can uh, see that mirage the next time you're moving around Alaska. I'm sure you've seen it before and maybe you just didn't realize what you're looking at. Really cool stuff and uh, really neat uh, uh, experience to see that atmospheric optics uh, phenomenon here in Alaska. On Twitter, NWS Alaska, NWS Fairbanks, NWS Juno, and NWS Anchorage will all get you weather information in between the Alaska weather shows and of course around four o'clock you'll get your daily afternoon map briefing and a whole lot more on YouTube. Maybe you like to see one of those uh, interesting satellite segments from our friend Eric Stevens up at Gina. You can do that and we'll be adding more very soon from him as well. Here's a look at the Arctic coast and the coastal plain. Guess what? It's another wind chill advisory. I know, I know, you're really surprised. 55 below is uh, how cold it could feel like as we get into uh, the next uh, 24 to 36 hours there. The wind's not moving a whole lot. In some cases, it's moving a little bit more through the gaps and the passes there. And when it blows, it could feel extraordinarily cold once again. And that's dangerous, especially if you have any exposed skin at all. So make sure, make sure that you're being extra careful. Uh, you got the kids bundled up, you got the goggles on the eyes, you're ready to go in Wainwright and Barrow and Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse and you now Kaktovik. Look, oh, we're going to leave you out of this one this time. I'm, I'm sure you're upset. But it looks like uh, the wind chill values won't be quite that cold in the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, at least for tonight and tomorrow. That could certainly change. Many areas along the north will be experiencing that severe cold, so be careful once again. Here's a look at the Bering Sea coast, and we see a large area of low pressure gathering moisture here across the north and western Pacific south of the Kamchatka Peninsula, and we also have a wide area of low pressure that's starting to push its way westward once again. We're kind of on the fringe right here. Most of that's still back in the Gulf, and we're getting that northeasterly flow still working off the continent, moving over the Pribilof, St. Matthew, and Nunavak Island. The other thing that's doing is it's moving that ice edge just a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer to St. Paul. And that runs right now about seven, seven and a half nautical miles away from that leading edge of where we've analyzed the ice strips to be today. So a little bit more of that creep happening today. Uh, the ice edge has slowed down a little bit. We're expecting to see more of a south and easterly flow coming up into uh, Bristol Bay region and the southern Bering Sea, so that might slow down that onset of ice as we go ahead into the next couple days. But if you're out there on the crab fleet, you want to keep close watch on that ice edge for sure. Here's a look at the satellite picture across the rest of Alaska today. Uh, what we're going to see is several waves of low pressure work their way up and into the northern Gulf and then really start to uh, gather steam as they move over Kodiak Island and into the southern Bering Sea as we head toward Monday, President's Day. Take a look at this wave of low pressure here working through southeastern Alaska. It doesn't look like a whole lot here on satellite, but we also have another circulation here that's sitting right over the Kenai Peninsula. It's slopped over some rain and snow showers for south central today. It's going to push some more moisture into the north and western sections of Alaska. That means more snow opportunities for you, generally from St. Mary's northward into Norton Sound and the Seward Peninsula and probably some patchy areas in the Brooks Range, though the chances for snow generally north of the Yukon really don't look to be that great right now. For many areas along the Alaska Peninsula and the central Aleutians, where you're going to see sloppy weather. It looks like you'll be dealing with rain and snow showers for probably the rest of the weekend and into early next week. And in some cases, it looks like your precipitation might even be warm enough for all rain. So a lot of warm air is working its way northward. That'll be the rule, obviously, for southeast. That'll become the rule for more and more places around Prince William Sound and the eastern Kenai Peninsula if it isn't happening already. 
Kodiak Island included and again many across the south and west and there will be more and more cloud cover for more parts of the interior. So here's the weather maps as we see it today. Uh, an occluded front here is starting to fall apart across the northern Gulf Coast, but along that boundary we've seen some gusty winds today. Skagway saw gusts upwards of almost 40 miles per hour, which for Skagway probably isn't too bad, but uh, one of the breezier spots, let's say, around Alaska today around Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet region. We've seen everything from rain to rain mixed with snow across the Cook Inlet. Uh, some of that rain though around Prince William Sound has been a little bit heavier at times and we do expect that will be the trend, especially over the next couple days around Prince William Sound, uh, the eastern side of the Kenai Peninsula, maybe even Kodiak Island could pick up a good one, two, even three inches of rain in some of the higher cases there. A frontal boundary working into the southern bearing will work against colder and drier air coming off the YK and over the Pribilovs. That should produce some snow and high pressure up across the north stays put at 1,038 millibars. It's rough, tough and hard to bluff and it will be producing some winds across the coastal plain. With that, again, winter weather uh, wind chill advisories are in effect tonight for many and will continue tomorrow and into Monday, in fact, for uh, values that could be as cold as 55 below. That's how cold it could feel. Notice an awful lot of dry air across the Yukon and most of the precipitations located across the south, southwest and southeast. And one more look southward and you see another frontal boundary working its way northward. This is the next surge of that warm and wet air. This is going to travel a little bit more toward the southwest and the Alaska Peninsula. This is down to 970 millibars by Sunday. So high pressure is going to make some inroads here across southern British Columbia and uh, the Yukon and as it sits very close to southeast it may start to squash a little bit of the precipitation chances there for some areas in southeast it might become a little more spotty let's say but it is also helping to feed in a surge of that warm and wet air to south central and southwest and Kodiak it's going to be a windy and a wet Sunday for you there's just no way around that rain and snow showers continue for the Alaska Peninsula and comes a little bit more hit and miss as you head out into the central chain Look for a boundary to set up around the Alaska Range. On the other side of that, it's cold enough for any moisture to come out as snow. Most areas along the Yukon will see more and more cloud cover tomorrow, and north of that, things are just dry but cold. Watch for some fog around the high pressure ridge across uh, well, places like Arctic Village and eastward, and we'll see some pockets of snow across St. Lawrence Island and around the St. Matthew Island waters. More than anything else, it looks to be just kind of cloudy and cold up to the north. For Monday, low pressure is still gathering steam. It's still moving westward. It has a lot of moisture wrapped up now. This big ball of weather from Norton Sound all the way down through the YK Delta through Bristol Bay. And notice that's warm air and that means rain for places like Bristol Bay and Cold Bay and False Pass all the way out toward uh, Akatan and Dutch Harbor and Alaska and uh, Adak and Atka. All those places are looking at wet weather, not snowy weather now, as this warmer air is lifting northward and moving westward. The triple point where the occlusion, the cold front and the warm front all come together right here. It's usually a pretty decent area for lift in the atmosphere. It produces a lot of upward moving air. It builds the clouds and it also produces a lot of precipitation. So with that, we're going to watch for some heavier rainfall moving into the Prince William Sound area. And some of that also works its way back into the Kenai Peninsula and Kodiak Island. So if you're in those areas and you're concerned about a little extra precipitation, that could be the day that that happens. Around the Copper River Basin and westward, look for some more snowfall. Some of that again working into the lower to middle Yukon Valley and probably around the Kuskokwim Valley we're dealing with rain and snow. Snow showers up around uh, Tanana perhaps and maybe nearing Fairbanks on the higher terrain around Fairbanks. But for southeast, some patches of dry weather trying to work through. But as this frontal boundary moves a little bit further northward, that rain should set back in. So an awful lot going on around southern and western Alaska. Northern Alaska remains cold and breezy, but let's talk about today. Lower to mid 40s for most areas in southeast from Juneau all the way down to Metlakatla, uh, Ketchikan, Annette and Craig. 41 in Hyder today. Sitka was 44. 42 in Yakutat with an inch and a half of precipitation at least today. Another soggy day for you. 30s and 40s around Prince William Sound today. Anchorage up to 27. 41 in Homer. 37 around Talkeetna with Squintna at 21. 2 in Fairbanks, 7 in Healy, 10 in Eagle today. So milder weather continues uh, for the mushers and the dogs as they continue moving west. 1 above in Fort Yukon, 2 below in Arctic Village, and temperatures well below zero in, Arc in uh, Anaktuvik Pass. Anywhere from 20 to about 30 below for the Arctic Coast, Wainwright and friends for the Chukchi Sea Coast. We're looking at readings around 30 below today. Kivalina was 8 below, Constabue 8 below, Tin City 14 below, but 20 above in Nome. Unilocleet saw temps near 12, 18 in Grayling, not too bad in Anvik as well around Grayling. 
And we saw attempts also in the teens today, 16 in Bethel and King Salmon and Dillingham. We're looking at readings that are still below freezing, but in the mid to upper 20s. The Pribilovs went above freezing today. The Alaska Peninsula in the 30s and 40s, Sandpoint 41, False Pass and Cold Bay very close to 40 as well. Mid 30s for Adak and Atka and 32 way out in Attu and 40 degrees for Kodiak. Now overnight lows there will drop to about 35. St. Paul down to 29, Bethel 12, 2 in Nome, about 19 below in Barrow. Middle Tananaw Valley including Fairbanks about 2 below. That's not too bad for uh, mid-February. Upper 20s to lower 30s for South Central and 35 in Kodiak again. Mid 30s to nearly 40 degrees in many in Southeast and looks like temps will be back to 40 if not warmer than that tomorrow, especially around Ketchikan and Annette. Uh, Craig, Klawak, all looking at readings that are mild. Uh, 30s and 40s for Prince William Sound. Looks like Homer and Seward will also be near 40 degrees tomorrow. Mid 30s for Anchorage, even warmer up around Talkeetna. Lower 20s for Fairbanks, 28 in Eagle. Temperatures in the mid to, uh, well, probably about 15 to 25 below or so for the Arctic coast, including Barrow and Kaktovik. 18 above in Nome, southwest in the mid 20s to mid 30s around Bristol Bay, King Salmon about 40. And the chain and the Alaska Peninsula also fairly close to 40 degrees tomorrow. Wow, that's a mess. IFR conditions all the way across the Kenai Peninsula, around the higher terrain of Prince William Sound and into southeast where MVFR starts to cut in and so does some drier air. We look at southwestern Alaska, IFR conditions for most of Bristol Bay, hit and miss across the higher terrain for the Alaska Peninsula, all the way out through the Pribilovs, and, and then we see some pockets of IFR across the higher terrain of the Alaska Range, many of your favorite passes, as well as areas north of Fairbanks, and also across the south-facing summits of the Western Brooks Range. Wow, that's a mess. Let's take a look at your pass conditions. Anaktuvik Pass, IFR, with some improvements happening during the day. Adigan Pass should also trend toward VFR after we get our day started on Sunday. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, expecting IFR conditions through most of the day. So if you're heading west or east through Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, probably not looking so good. Rainy Pass, similar conditions there. A lot of slop just hanging right over the Alaska Range. Windy Pass, looking like IFR. Not to mention turbulence is going to be an issue through the western Alaska Range and into the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow. So all in all, not looking like a great flying day across the western range. Isabel Pass, IFR conditions expected there for most of the day. Mentasta Pass is going to start moving toward MVFR conditions as we get into Sunday. Same goes for Tanita Pass. Watch for some uh, better visibility and uh, higher ceilings as we start our day. Portage Pass, generally speaking, IFR, but on the western side, on the downwind side of this, we might be looking at MVFR conditions on and off throughout the day. So it won't all be IFR, but it doesn't matter if you can't get through, right? Chilkoot and White Pass, we expect to see IFR conditions through most of the day. <coughs> Now, freezing levels, that warm and wet air continues to just expand its range across the Gulf of Alaska. So initially, we're looking at the surface freezing line very close to the Gulf Coast. That's kind of a known issue. But south of that, two, four, six, even 10,000 foot freezing levels there. Though things are warming up, all because of that ridge of high pressure we were talking about yesterday, just pushing its way further and further up the west coast of the United States through western Canada and into Alaska. Even the surface freezing lines creeping northward out in the bearing, so you know things are getting warm. Icing potential really hit and miss across the Yukon into the upper Yukon Valley of Alaska. The main issues are going to be along the frontal boundary here in the Gulf, generally above 9,000 feet. Why? Because it's so warm. And also south of the eastern Aleutians, above 4,000 feet. That's where the cold air is starting to wrap back in. So the main issues will be over the Gulf, Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, and over the eastern chain, and another wide area of icing potential that's light to isolated moderate way out across the western bearing. Everything else for southeast, south central, and generally speaking up north should be pretty light and isolated. Here's that ridge of high pressure in the jet stream. You can see it's carving out this huge ridge across the west coast, Canada, and into Alaska. And as it's doing this, that air is moving northward from much warmer and wetter locations in the Pacific. We still have a pretty pronounced trough out here across the northern Pacific, and with that comes a faster moving storm track around 150 knots or so. So as storms are developing, they're gathering that moisture, working northward, and again, our weather is changing because of this weather pattern. All the cold and all the storm energy and all the snow that you're hearing about out on the east coast that's making everybody talk about it on the news, of course, that's because of this weather pattern as well. All the cold that we had is starting to move 
eastward fairly quickly on this. Now back to Alaska, 9,000 feet, you see that southerly flow working across the Gulf of Alaska, 40 to 50 knots there working into the Gulf Coast. We have our ridge extending northward already into southeast archipelago. That flow still mainly south and then it bends over a little bit more into British Columbia around 40 knots or so. Interior winds are picking up 15 to 20 knots here. We have a low pressure circulation sitting off the Chukchi Sea coast and winds are still pretty light across the bearing around 15 to 25 knots. Winds stay fairly light at 3,000 feet here, 10 to 15 knots for most of the interior and southwest. But look at this, around the Alaska Peninsula, those wind speeds up to 50 to 80 knots. So there's going to be some turbulence issues here tomorrow. Some of that could include Kodiak Island, around the Barren Islands, the Cook Inlet region. And we'll probably see some faster moving wind gusts in the vicinity of the frontal boundary. So be careful again if you're flying from, say, Prince William Sound westward out toward the YK and into the Alaska Peninsula. There will be some turbulence and low-level wind shear. So I've drawn that in there for you, and we've called isolated severe in some cases here from Bristol Bay southward through False Pass, Cold Bay, Sand Point, over Kodiak Island, and this is going to extend pretty high up there as far as those really rough and tumble winds. So I went for 15,000 feet. That's pretty big range. Just watch it out there and check the weather again before you go. Check it twice. Below 8,000 feet for the Cook Inlet region, some of that region occasional moderate, and below 10,000 feet for a large part of southwestern Alaska. So maybe tomorrow's a good day to take off. At least flying, that is. We'll take a look at the ice edge and check on St. Paul and St. George here in just a few minutes, as well as the rest of your marine forecast. Stay tuned. We've just driven through 10 months of winter. The daylight's coming back, it's warming up, everybody's got a little bit of cabin fever. And what do we throw in front of them? 18 hours of daylight, a pair of skis, and some fun activities. Nana Nordic is the story of what happens when cross-country skiers from all over, Olympians, World Cup racers, university and high school coaches, share their sport with remote Alaska. In 2011, I finished my season and I had two days to pack up for the trip. And to be honest, I didn't know what I was really getting myself into. After the ski program left last year, the kids wanted to continue skiing and they missed not having that activity. 300 pairs of boots, poles, and skis were sent to the far north above the Arctic Circle to Kotzebue and the 10 surrounding villages. Located in northwest Alaska, the Inupiaq have lived in what is called the Nana region for more than 10,000 years. Transportation is by snow machine and airplane. Nordic skiing has not been a part of this northern culture, but that is changing. Despite their remoteness, the Nana region villages are busy with the activity of daily life and for children, school. Good morning, Katsu School. The temperature outside today is 14 below zero. Today, Nana Nordic will be visiting all the gym classes. Now, on to your morning announcements. The month of April, with 18 hours of sunlight, is perfect for cross-country skiing. Volunteer coaches taught the students a new way to enjoy the world just outside their door. The volunteers come from all sorts of backgrounds. We have recreational skiers, we have competitive skiers, and we also have Olympians. Good afternoon. We just flew in from Anchorage, and we're here with... It's really awesome to see them take up something new that may be challenging at first and just to succeed at it and they have a lot of fun together and it's something that's so positive and it's really healthy for them. Our kids are really active and they enjoy being active. They would much rather do that than sit at home playing video games if there's somebody offering it. Skiing feels kind of like swimming because you could feel the smooth air going across your face.
the students spent five days learning to ski, during school and after school. The emphasis was on fun and exploring the land. Kids respond really well to skiing. I mean, a lot of them are maybe a little, a little timid, a little afraid at the start. They learn that they're capable of doing these things that they, that they didn't think they were capable of doing before. You go right, left, right, left, and you can go as fast as you can, as slow as you can, and you could take your time. We would like to have skiing as a school activity. It would be great to have a ski club up here and we love to ski and hopefully the communities enjoy skiing as well. 40 coaches, 1,500 students, 100 adults, 440 hours of coaching. Nana Nordic's goal is simple. Introduce students and communities to cross-country skiing, a fitting sport for the place they call home and the world beyond. Love watching that, and with the kids' smiles there, it makes it even better. Here's a look at today's sea ice edge, as analyzed by our Alaska Sea Ice Desk team, and I've changed the colors just a little bit again here, so you can understand what's going on. Here's the main sea ice pack: the more, the higher concentrations, the thicker ice, and then I've got this area shaded in white here. That's where the ice strips are approaching there. That edge between where the ice strips start and St. Paul is about seven nautical miles in about seven and a half or so and it's been moving south and southeast. However, we're looking at more of a southerly flow moving up so this might be about as far south as the ice edge goes but keep your eye on it as you look at the bigger picture here you can see there's still a lot of open water between the ice edge and the continental shelf so plenty of room for growth there and uh, well, we'll just have to see what happens after that low pressure system works its way to the north and west. Here's a look at the marine forecast now for southeast. We have southeasterly winds working up the outer coast across the inner coastlines. Northerlies coming down the Lynn Canal and through Stevens Passage around 15 knots with a three foot sea. Southeasterlies light and clear and straight and picking up a little bit more to 15 knots on Monday. Northerlies also coming up to 15 knots in Lynn Canal. Southeasterlies continue along the outer coast 25 to as high as 35 knots with 18 foot seas outside of Yakutat. And as we look at South Central, Easterlies are going to be much stronger here. In fact, most of the Western Gulf and uh, most of areas around Kodiak Island and down the Alaska Peninsula are looking at storm warnings as we head into Sunday and Monday. Easterlies inside of Prince William Sound up to six foot seas there. Northeasterlies coming down Cook Inlet and then running into a wall of wind moving across the Barren Islands at 45 knots. 14 to 15 foot seas there, 50 knots inside of Shelikoff Strait and on the eastern side of Kodiak Island, up to 22 foot seas there on a 50 knot wind. Now winds diminish greatly as we head into Monday. That's good news. South and easterly winds though are still going to be strong. We'll still see storm force winds there in the northern sections of the Gulf at 50 knots with 24 foot seas, 9 foot seas inside of Prince William Sound and north and northeasterly winds still going strong there in Cook Inlet up to 30 to 35 knots north of Homer. 
for the Alaska Peninsula, 40 to 50 knots there on Sunday. Again, storm force winds on the southern side there, south of Castle Cape, 50 knots with 21 foot seas, 45 knots on the northern side with an 11 foot sea there outside of Bristol Bay. That's 40 knot winds. For Monday, winds shift to more of a south and easterly flow. That helps the ice edge, 30 to 35 knots and 20 foot seas there on the Pacific side. For the Aleutians, north and easterly winds will be much stronger from Nikolsky to Unalaska and out toward Akatan. 40 knot winds there with 14 foot seas on the Pacific side. North and northeasterly winds 20 to 25 knots from Kiska to Attu, becoming a little more northerly on Monday. And north and westerly winds set in 25 to 35 knots in those areas with 14 foot seas on the Bering side and 10 to 16 foot seas there as you head a little bit further east. For the West Coast, northerlies will be the strongest coming off of St. Lawrence Island and then really picking up speed around St. Matthew up to 40 knots there with an 8-foot sea. Easterlies, though, moving off of the southwestern coastline with 4 to 6-foot seas on a 20 to 25-knot wind. East and northeasterly winds up to 35 knots by Monday. You'll see those north and easterly winds coming off of Hooper Bay, St. Lawrence Island, and St. Matthew around 25 to 30 knots with 10-foot seas for St. Matthew, 14-foot seas around the Pribilovs. And in the north, easterlies at 15 knots across the Beaufort east and northeasterly winds from Wainwright down to Cape Lisburn at 25 knots. By Monday, we're looking at winds picking up speed once again. That means worse wind chills there, 25 to 30 knots around Kaktovik and Prudhoe Bay, and winds diminish around Cape Lisburn toward Kotzebue Sound at 15 to 20 knots. Recapping tonight's weather, wind chill advisories are back for the Brooks Range and for most of the coastal plain. One exception would be the eastern Beaufort Seacoast for tonight and tomorrow. You're expecting wind chill values could drop as low as 55 low. So once again, use extra caution if you have to move around outside. For the Gulf Coast communities, it's going to be a soggy rest of the weekend in just about all areas. Prince William Sound to southeast, it's all rain, but as you get westward toward Kodiak Island, that may mix in a little bit more with snow as we head into Sunday. But initially, we're going to see more and more of that warm and wet air moving northward, and that means a much warmer situation for southwest. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. See you. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage, providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company.